I was walking down the street the other day, minding my own business, when I heard the majestic call of a coelosaur coming from my neighbor's backyard. No, I'm not living in a real-life Jurassic Park fantasy or nightmare, depending on your perspective. Sure, the coelosaur family includes the mighty T-Rex, but it also includes some modern-day descendants that are usually a whole lot less fearsome birds. That's right, that flock of seagulls descending upon the dumpsters in a strip mall parking lot are really just modern-day dinosaurs. The only reason we know this is thanks to fossil-loving nerds like me who made whole careers out of our childhood dino obsessions. And if you're someone else who loves dinosaurs the way a seagull loves a half-eaten hamburger, you might consider a career in paleontology. Hi, I'm Callie Moore, and I'm a collections manager at the University of Montana. This is Study Hall, and here's how to become a paleontologist. Okay, okay, so paleontology isn't all about dinosaurs. Don't get me wrong, that's a big part of the appeal. But paleontologists study all kinds of other stuff besides just terrible lizards, like ancient mammals and invertebrates, as well as plants and even footprints. Anything that manages to leave a fossil record, you can bet we'll dig it up and study it. Broadly, a paleontologist is someone who studies the history of life on Earth, typically using fossils, the preserved remains, like bones, teeth, and shells, of ancient life, as well as the traces it left behind, like trackways, burrows, and nests. But there are just as many ways to do that as there are vertebra in the neck of a diplodocus. From the field to the lab, through conservation and preservation and good old back-breaking labor, paleontologists do all kinds of different things. For example, some paleontologists spend their time on the front line of fossil discovery, out in the field, tracking down those vestiges of prehistoric creatures. This involves digging through rocks. Lots and lots of rock. And once they've found a fossil, they've got to excavate it too. Excavation and collection methods depend on the type of fossil, and they can range from just picking up a specimen off the ground to hauling a nine-ton block of sandstone from the side of a cliff. After a paleontologist manages to get the fossils out of the field, they have to prepare those fossils for study. Fossil preparation is done by a skilled preparator, also a paleontologist, who works in a lab to clean and repair fossils so they not only look nice, but so they can also tell us about the creatures they came from. And then it's time for yet another paleontologist to get involved to curate the find. Each fossil is given a unique catalog number and tucked safely away in a collection, where other paleontologists can come take a look. But paleontology isn't all about getting down and dirty on digs. In addition to fieldwork, many paleontologists are professors and spend a lot of time doing research and asking questions about the fossils they're working with to try and learn more about the prehistoric world. What did this ancient creature look like? What type of environment did it live in? How is it related to other animals? And why did it go extinct? To answer those questions, they'll have to use all kinds of techniques and equipment, plus all that dinosaur knowledge they retained from land before time once they got over the trauma of Littlefoot's mom dying. And hopefully, eventually, they'll discover something new that they can publish in a peer-reviewed journal so that other paleontologists and dino-loving kids can learn it too. So the actual practice of paleontology can look way different depending on what you're doing, where you work, and what you're trying to accomplish. Because there are a lot of ways to be a paleontologist, there's also a lot of difference in salary. Some paleontologists earn their keep by stringing together one-off gigs where the pay might be as low as $1,000 per job. Meanwhile, a tenured professor in paleontology with a book deal might be pulling in over $100,000 a year. Working as a professor is probably the most common way people make their careers as paleontologists. So if you love to research and talk about dinosaurs or trilobites or palmites, being a college professor is a pretty sweet gig. And getting there starts with, you guessed it, college. Now, a bachelor's in paleontology doesn't really exist, but some schools offer paleontology minors or concentrations inside other related majors. So instead of looking for a paleontology major, you'll want to look for an earth science, geology, or integrative biology program where you can incorporate some paleontological studies. In addition to taking paleontology-related classes like comparative anatomy or chronostratigraphy, there are some other things you can do, even in undergrad, to get 
yourself on track for a life as a paleontology professor. Like, you'll want to look into summer internships, where you might be able to get hands-on experience doing real paleontology before you have any degrees at all. Some summer internships take place at fossil sites, like Ashfall Fossil Bed State Historic Park in Nebraska, where I did my internship, prepping fossils and giving tours. But they can also take place at museum collections, national parks, or research nonprofits like the American Geosciences Institute. And they're great opportunities to both gain experience and skill, and just to figure out if you really like the work of paleontology. Another thing you'll want to do in your undergrad is a senior thesis. You might help out with a professor's existing research or set out on your own independent study. But either way, working on a scientific study is a great chance to get a taste of the academic side of paleontology by exploring a topic that interests you, developing your own research question, and learning how to answer it like the budding paleontologist you are. In addition to being cool, fun ways to learn more about everything from Albertella to Zuni Ceratops, internships and senior theses are good ways to make yourself stand out in grad school applications, which is important because if you want to be an academic paleontologist, you'll eventually need to go for the whole hog, or whole entelodont, if you might say, and go to grad school. Unlike undergrad programs, grad schools often have master's and doctoral programs in paleontology. And if you're pretty certain you want to be a research paleontologist, getting a master's of science and then a PhD in paleontology is probably going to be the straightest shot. During your MS program, you'll need to complete some graduate level courses in paleontology. These might be similar to your undergrad courses, but they'll be more specific and in depth and give you a more solid grasp of the whole field of paleontology and your specific research interests. And then, just like in undergrad, you'll write a thesis where you'll present the results of original scientific research. This is the big achievement of a master's program. It's what proves to your institution that you've really mastered paleontology and gets you your degree. If you're living in the US, that whole process can take two to five years to complete. And when it's all done, you'll have to defend your thesis in front of a committee of professors, which often includes a public presentation and an oral examination, where you can tell your professors all about the Micropachycephalosaurus, or you know, whatever else you're into. And when your master's thesis is approved, your grad school journey starts all over. Only this time, you'll be moving into a PhD program. Just like an MS, a PhD is all about your thesis. You'll need to prepare another research proposal, get it approved, and then complete even more exams to prove you're even ready to be a doctoral candidate. And once your committee agrees they want to hear more from you and your Micropachycephalosaurus, you'll get working on another another big research project. A PhD usually takes anywhere from five to seven years to complete, but once you're done, you'll be a certified doctor of paleontology, and you'll know more about basal marginocephalin dinosaurs than you or anyone ever wanted to know. With a PhD in paleontology or even a closely related field like biology or geology, you'll be set up for a couple different paleontology careers. If you want to go the research and professorship route, you can start applying for postdoctoral or faculty positions at colleges and universities. You could also branch out into the museum world and become a curator of paleontology, the person who's in charge of the museum's whole paleontology collection. And curators are often faculty members at associated universities, so the two might go hand in hand. But like I said before, getting a PhD is definitely a whole entelodont situation. And those things were big, like 1,600 pounds. The whole journey from your undergrad to your PhD level career can take up to 20 years. But if you don't want to spend two decades in school, or if you think teaching and research just aren't your thing, I have good news for you. There are tons of other ways to be a paleontologist that only require a master or even just a bachelor's degree. And great places to look for those kinds of jobs are museums. While museum curators usually need a PhD, collections managers, who are kind of like librarians but for fossils, can sometimes only need a bachelor's. Collections managers like me keep the museum's fossils conserved, preserved, and accessible to researchers as well as to the public. Museums also sometimes hire paleontology lab and field managers, who make sure the prep lab is safe and working efficiently, and oversee field expeditions to collect more fossils. And the fossils that go on display get handed over to an exhibition technician who provides daily care and upkeep of in-house traveling and off-site exhibits. And paleo artists also help with museum displays by reconstructing ancient animals and ecosystems and are often employed to provide art for publications, digital content, and more. 
Or if you really want to get techie with it, you might become a paleontology technician or a 3D technician who creates replicas of fossils using 3D scanners. All those jobs usually only require a bachelor's degree, though a master's can definitely give you a leg up. But unlike in academia, those degrees don't have to be in paleontology or even biology or geology. Like if you're interested in managing collections, you might check into a master's in museum studies, also known as museology. Or if you want to be a paleo artist, you might add on a specialization in studio art or else get some training to be a 3D technician. And if museums aren't your thing either, there's always the government sector, which sometimes hires paleontologists to work for the Bureau of Land Management, the National Park Service, and the Forest Service. Those jobs include being a park ranger or state paleontologist and work to protect fossil sites that are on public land, like at Dinosaur National Monument in Colorado and Utah, which has, as you might have guessed, a lot of dinosaur fossils. But fossils don't just come from designated fossil sites. In some states, fossils are common enough that people find them during constructions for other industries. And in those cases, a special kind of paleontologist called a mitigator will work to assess the project's potential impact on paleontological resources and help recover any fossils that turn up. Mitigators often work in the private sector and they usually only have to have a bachelor's degree and some relevant experience. And we can't forget about paleontology educators. Educators teach people about paleontology by doing outreach and giving tours and designing activities, or passing a 3D printed model of your micro pachycephalosaurus's tiny thick skull around the room. Paleontology educators often work for museums, but they might also visit schools or even lecture at colleges. And again, they usually only need a bachelor's in a relevant subject. That's a lot of choices. And it's hard to say anything universal about the degrees and experience you'd need for any of those professions. But once you start to zero in on what branch of paleontology you're interested in, looking for job postings in that area is a good way to get a handle on what employers are looking for. Then you can start to make choices about what kind of school you want to go to. And the great thing about school is you can always go back. If you start off as a mitigator or an exhibit technician, you can always get more education later and move on to something different. Just like all those fossil your paleontological skills will only get better with time. But even once you've got the skills and education, finding a job in paleontology can be a little bit like finding an intact trilobite in hard limestone. That is to say, harder than you might think. But luckily, paleontologists are generally pretty willing to help each other out in job searches as well as fossil digs. Paleontological societies and associations are great places to start looking for jobs in the field. Many of these places, like the Society of Vertebrate Paleontology or the Mountain Plains Museums Association, have job boards on their website that could show positions you wouldn't find in other places. And if you can, you might even think about becoming a member of one of these societies, which can help you get in touch with other paleontologists paleontologists and build your professional network. You can also sign up for a paleontology listserv like PaleoNet to get emails that keep you updated on the field, including job announcements from all over the world. Paleontology isn't a huge field, so landing your dream job might take a little longer than it would for more common professions. But with your education and your experience, you'll get there eventually. After all, that micro pachycephalosaurus isn't gonna study itself. But maybe after all that, you're still not totally sold on a career in paleontology. Well, before you dive right into that excavation pit, there are a couple of things you could do to try out paleontological work and see if it's right for you. You could just walk out into your backyard with a bucket and a garden spade and start digging around, or you could try some slightly more professional options. Options. For example, museums and science institutes sometimes offer excavation trips you can join for a fee. They'll take you to a fossil site and show you the ropes, and you can spend hours or even days assisting a professional crew as they collect fossils. And if you can't swing one of those, lots of states and local communities have fossil clubs that host collecting trips for members. If you're more interested in the museum side of things, you can try volunteering at a museum, interacting with visitors, doing data entry work in the collection, or learning how to prep fossils. Assuming you fall in love with paleontology after testing the water, or rocks if you will, you'll have made some connections, 
learned some skills, and gotten a head start on your paleontological journey. So whether you love T-Rex or trilobites, palmites or parasaurolophus, or you just really want to learn more about prehistory and whatever lived there, paleontology might be the job for you. Whatever path you choose to become a paleontologist and whatever kind of work you do, you'll be helping us all learn more about the history of life on Earth, which, if you think about it, is pretty huge important knowledge. Plus, you'll be getting paid to nerd out about fossils, making it pretty much the best job ever, at least according to five-year-old dino-obsessed me. But she may be biased. If you want to learn more about undergrad major options, check out our Fast Guide series where we dive into popular college majors. And check out GoStudyHall.com for more resources. If you want to help us out, give this video a like, comment your favorite Land Before Time character, and smash that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. See you next time.